so this is our pedal journey. This is a sociology, social work, anthropology, social policy, social administration group. And we are in a moving train. So that's our pedal journey. And the name of our train is Krabala. Accra Ibadan Kampala. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Lorry train. No. E lorry. No, no, no. It's just Accra, Ibadan, and Kampala. Yes. And we are moving from Nairobi into the future. So you can see our stops. <laughs> So um, based on our stories, based on the stories we put together, um, it look, um, our group appears to have focused. Our goal was on innovative learning approaches. And from what we have, we used mainly the use, um, learner-centered approaches and technology, and technology for teaching. So te we have the role play. And we had very, very innovative um, ideas where some of our colleagues used kits, drama in class, got some of the students to buy a concept and dramatize the concept so their colleagues will, know, um, will learn. We also had case teaching. We got cases from the MRPP, the Arab Spring, to teach social mobilization theories. There was also the use of concept mapping. There was the use of storytelling, using the story of Joseph in the Bible. And because the students could relate, it was a blast. The students had a very nice time in class. We also had a project approach where students were sent on a project, go into the field, go and explore issues about topics that are going to be taught in the semester. And then any time the topic was being taught, students were able to relate with what was going on in the field. We also had the use of simulation, where one of our colleagues used Monopoly to teach um, negotiation strategies. We found that very, very interesting and innov innovative. There was peer assessments. There was experiments where students were sent into the field as part of their lecture in social psychology and conducting field work to go into the field and pose as many things, including practicing juju or being a fraud in the night, wearing hoods to just to see how the public will respond to things like that. And then there was also the Google Classroom, which our colleague tells us that has cut down costs and the students are enjoying it very much. He's able to engage all his students at the same time or at different times and he knows who is contributing and who is not contributing. So I will talk about, we don't have a, a chat like you see it, but our train is a chat. So, as you can see, our strategies, <laughs> this is innovation, when trains become charts, you know. So our, <laughs> so our strategies, it's a double deck train, you know, just that part has the double deck, and that will show that that's the highest point. Our meeting pedal and what we have learned is the highest point, so that is our strength, using the strategies to teach. Then we have challenges. As we taught, using the strategies, we had some challenges. This included infrastructure. Some of our class sizes, no, that is different. So infrastructure where the, we're even sitting arrangements and then the arrangements in the class does not really favor um, a teaching approach or a method that we are using. Then we also had technology. We, you have nice ideas like videos and all that, but you get to class and internet becomes a challenge or there is power outage and then that becomes, um, it, it ends, it's likely to end the class abruptly. We also have large classes that it becomes very difficult to do innovative stuff with, but our colleagues tried. And then we have untrained co-lecturers, especially for our colleagues that teach undergraduate students. Um, they are co-lecturers. Sometimes the class sizes are very large, like 1,000. So the students are, going, are shared among four lecturers, teaching the same syllabus. And then because some of our colleagues are pedal trained and they are bringing in all these innovations, our own, train, our own pedal trained colleagues have a problem with, for instance, coming to a class and showing a video to engender discussion. They think you just came to entertain and you are going away. And sometimes we have had occasion where somebody had marked a colleague down because he didn't understand the teaching approach. So that is one difficulty we have. And we also think that students are shortchanged because those who come to the pedal train classes gain more and then those who go to the other classes. So there is not a balance in the delivery to students because of the number of um, people that are on this training. We also have a 
but so this is on the part of colleague lecturers. On the part of students, they are used to lectures. I come, there are slides, I take notes and I go away. They are not used to the, innovate, the, the innovation, so the shift is becoming a problem and they are not responding too well. So like the example I cited, some of them would prefer to run to the classes where they get the lectures rather than stay in our class where we stimulate them with these different activity. So the response to the new innovation, the shift in teaching is a problem. Students are not responding well and uh, we have to do something about it. Overcoming some of these challenges we have identified, we realize that um, uh, um, planning with multiple approaches. So instead of just planning with a video or planning to show something that hinges or power, I, I would want to do a video and I also want to have some debates or role plays in mind so that when I go and power fails, I can use the other approach. So that's one of the ways. And then linking innovation. So we realize that we have concentrated on teaching innovation in teaching but that has not translated into assessment and that was a challenge for some one of our colleagues so we have told ourselves that as part of overcoming that and lesson learned is to link the innovation in teaching to innovation in assessment so we are not found wanting in that regard and also prepare assessment as part of yes innovation and assessment prepare it concurrently with teaching so as i prepare innovations in teaching i do it concurrently with um, assessments and then more time is needed we need more time so we have one of our colleagues who sends students to an organization different organizations to collect data before the start of the semester to use for the semester but because some of the organizations were not respect um, receptive and this delayed how she intended to use the approach. So this time she has planned she's going to prepare more and look for organizations that are more familiar or will be more receptive. So um, it won't hinder or hamper the progress of that approach. So those were some of our challenges. As we said, our strategies are bigger. Challenges are, you know, just to show that we are doing well. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we also have feedback based on all of these we had some feedback for pasga and uh, we thought that even though some of our challenges are very individual based like large class sizes um, infrastructure that pasga can't come um, pedal may not have enough control over because it's a university it's an university based problem we also think that um, pasga should pedal sorry Pedal should also maybe link with partner investment because what would be the point in teaching us all these innovations and we go back and things like infrastructure is not helping us to practice them. So we know it would be a big a Herculean task to ask Pedal to build infrastructure. But could it at least, could not it, they at least um, partner with the universities to get their buy-in so that things like infrastructure and other things that create an enabling environment for us to use the modules will be made available. Otherwise, it will be a cost 90 for most of us. Um, we also said that the training modules, um, we have realized from the different training sessions, from Nairobi to Ibadan to this place, that we are overloaded. And there are a lot of adult learners amongst us. Most of us are adult learners. The overloading is not helpful. But far above that, we think that some of these things should be university or needs-based so that partner universities should tell Pedal where our deficiencies are and where we would need um, the training. In that case, there wouldn't be the overload or the, the need to give us everything in one go. We think we have to reduce the, over, the load we put on the participants by knowing what we need. For instance, at the University of Ghana, we have what we call Sakai. It's almost like an enhanced technology enhanced training. So um, we won't buy into what Pedal is offering easily because the investor will think it's a duplication of effort. Yet there are many things Pedal is offering that we are deficient in that our university will readily accept. We think doing a need-based training model for investors will be more useful. We like this, but for better results, this will help. We also think that um, there is contradiction in pedal training. And this was very unanimous. Because pedal training says that there are diverse learners. And so when we go back, we should pay attention to the diversity and deliver accordingly. 
But we realize in these trainings that the diversity amongst us, I mean, do we even know how diverse this group is? What are our learning needs? How are we absorbing all of these things? We don't see that translate in the training. So we think that in a very mild and light note, practicing what you preach could be useful here. So the contradiction has to be taken care of because if we are rushed in many things and you say we should go back and take our time, that becomes like holding the chin and pointing to the cheek. So that has to be paid attention to. Um, we also mentioned that there is the need to build cap um, cascade pedal in other universities. An example is what happened in Ibadan. If we could replicate it in other places so that the issue of co-lecturers not being pedal trained and its accompanying challenges might be taken care of. So those are the feedback. As we said, that is also a very small box fading almost in comparison with our strategies. Uh, I am our double deck coach for the strategy. We want to say that all in all, pedal is a welcoming idea. So as you can see, we have balloons, we have hip 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 hooray, and what we are saying is that pedal is super, pedal is evergreen, and pedal rocks. We are happy about pedal, and we hope our feedback will be taken. <laughs> Thank you. Ish, Krabala. Kampala. Krabala. There is Kampala indeed. I was just trying to identify. Um, I'll just, uh, first of all, thank you very much for your very uh, impressive reflection. Uh, just to encourage you regarding the student uh, kind of initial resistance, I think whenever there is Many of our students across most of my universities have been socialized that everything is done for them. So normally when you begin to get them out of their comfort zone, initially, for most, most of us, we've had that resistance. Some of us were even reported that in this other group, they are given handouts. This one, they leave everything to us. But I can assure you that by the end, of the semester, these students keep comparing notes. They will appreciate it. So like the test is in the pudding. So just as a form of encouragement, that initially it has happened almost all the people that to us, if you go around the table and you check, this is something that is normally resisted, both by the, the students but also for the students to be able to have that form of control, it means more work even for us. So colleagues will also resist it, because you need to really plan. But at the end of it, you realize that when you do the prior planning well, then in class, things are a lot easier and thereafter. So that was just a form of encouragement. Thank you. Let's keep it going. Thank you for that encouragement to all of us. I invite the next Right, so we still have uh, two wonderful academics from the University of Ghana and we want to interview them. They are going to tell us what their take homes have, have been and also their aha moment throughout the annual convening. And so, Prof, my name is Kwesi Sam, you tell us your names. My name is Dr. Alice Boate from, from the University of Ghana Department of Social Work. Okay, so I'm Dr. Peace Mamletete from the Department of Sociology. All right, I'm so much happy to be here because we are talking about pedagogical leadership, which is of um, great importance to us as academics. What has been your greatest um, aha moment, right from yesterday's opening ceremony, the sessions that went on? I think uh, even before yesterday, you know, last year we were here okay. and there were a lot of things that uh, we have learned from this program. Uh, in my class, for instance, the harm moment, one of them was uh, when I, I used uh, concept mapping, you know, and uh, the students could just see the one concept with sub, sub, 
headings or concepts on just one page and they were so happy with it. Remember during the exam they even asked me if we were going to do concept mapping because that was the aha moment. Just on a, uh, half a page they could see everything, the skeleton and then build it up without writing pages. Yes. So what do you think are some of the competencies that you're able to transfer to them using the concept mapping? I think one of the cons, uh, cons, uh, competencies. competencies will be the fact that uh, within a short time you identify a concept and then you dissect it and then you have sub concepts or headings through which you can learn or you can bring out so many ideas uh, within a short time. So were you here last year? Yes, I was. So then you have a lot of experience to share with us. Oh yes, we've tried to apply a lot of the things we've learned in small classes as well as in large classes. And uh, the experiences have been exciting, especially in the large classes, because you think that you don't have the time or the class is too big. But if you are conscious about what you are doing, you can make an impact. So for example, I had a, a situation where I've been teaching students about experiments and it's all about other people's documented experiments. But this was a situation where I sought to let the students go out and do their own experiments, choose their own topic, determine their own approaches and collect data. And I remember some of them decided to create a situation where they put eggs and red cloth and tried to create like as though a juju was planted in some lecture hall. And you know, they came out with very interesting findings. Their the motive was to get students to obtain knowledge for themselves and not me telling them that this is what experiments are and these are the ethical issues, you know. And the, the aha thing that came out of that was they did this in some other colleague's lecture room and my colleague was scared when he saw it, when she saw it. So she came to me and said, please, what did you get your student to come and do in my class? And I said, oh, it came out from Pedal and this is just to get the students to do that kind of work. So it's God gave me the opportunity to speak to somebody else about Pedal. Somebody's not had the opportunity to be trained. But for this very trip, what I would say is that in as much as I've used several of the methods, I have never really linked it to theory. That is because of this theoretical orientation, that is why I'm using these methods. I've not been able to, I, I never really linked the two till this morning. So that is new for me and I find it very interesting. Yes, yeah. and then to take it from there, you, uh, the case studies, within one case study you could uh, look at, you could view the video and then relate it to theories and then be able to capture uh, the different groups of students and then what theoretical perspective goes for each group of students. It's, it's an aha moment. Okay. All right. <laughs> Indeed it is. So my, my key issue is that we've all gotten to know the relevance of pedagogical leadership in Africa. But you know, we are using a very small approach. How can we cascade this entire pedal and we try our best to get all universities on board? Okay, I think we should, like we keep saying, create a community of practice. There's one person influencing another, influencing another. I was just telling my colleague that just within our department, I am seminar coordinator. You could have one session where you speak to your colleagues about this and sit in their class, say, in a DTAC session and give them feedback. And so there's a cascading effect. You teach another who teaches another. And before you realize, we all are using the approaches and the philosophies in our teaching. What about you? What is your favorite uh, model? Uh, uh, case study. Okay. Yeah, I like case study. And it's, that is why I'm saying that adding the video to it and then bringing out the theoretical aspects is touching to me. And then you are talking about spreading it out. We are going to, and we have done it in our classrooms, and we are going to spread it out to. Uh, other, our colleagues as well, so that they will also embrace it. And I know gradually it is going to go to other colleges as well. So what are you looking up to, or what are you looking forward to next year or next session of pedagogical leadership training? Well, so far, I must confess, the part that I have not really grasped very well is using the technological technology enhanced learning of course the internet does not facilitate it a bit so that's where i want to really grasp because if you understand what to do you need that to 
help you actually do it. So that's what I'm looking forward to polish, particularly in this particular session. Yeah. Right. There, there's a fun session of the interview. And, dog, assuming you wake up one morning, you give your student assignment, and then they tell you, you want to submit the assignment via WhatsApp, what will be your reaction? <laughs> I think we do that. Uh, yeah, with, 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 they have a WhatsApp group. And so some things they send by WhatsApp. So we do that. Maybe other things we don't do. Yeah. Well, I would not, I don't know what I would say, but I think so far I have used Sakai. So I get my students to send assignments in through Sakai, the Sakai platform, or to send as email attachments. I've not tried WhatsApp yet, but anything is possible. Then I, I'm sure you are just using the technology, <laughs> right? Thank you so much for spending time with us, and we look forward to interviewing you again in other sessions. Great.